right, so thought would make the uh, thought would make the uh, everyone. So where's the fire viewing on Zoom? Fire sensor is right there, so be careful. Okay. Makes them wish they'd come. You see. Yeah. And a little, a little smudge, not too much. Yeah. Perfect. But just enough to uh, decolonize all of your space. <laughs> Do you want to? Uh, Let me introduce you. And then you can spend yes. people and myself. All right, sorry, I have a little technical difficulty there. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight, and um, thank you for everyone who is attending on the Zoom. Let me just make sure that, okay, I made a live transcription there so you can hear. And um, we are so pleased to welcome uh, Professor Adam Pritchard to. Purchase College. There's nothing he's been down. He's been collaborating with us, including on the science project, which you may have seen out front. Uh, he is an expert in native Westchester, and uh, tonight he's going to uh, share some of his knowledge with us. And uh, he has been the, the author of many books, which actually he has brought some of them if you want to check them out afterwards. And he also has uh, taught at many of our local reg uh, regional Westchester colleges and he's uh, appeared on television programs, and he's an active member of many groups, including, uh, the, I think you're currently the director of the uh, Algonquin uh, Center. So mm -hmm. please welcome uh, Adam Pritchard. Yes, thank you. Oh. So. a shaker from the southwest and um, I wanted to sing a song to welcome you and without the drumstick um, can we use this okay so the song goes like this Song. And so, in order for you to learn it, the best thing is if I just did it part by part and then you call an answer. All right? So, I'll do a little bit and you just call right back. You a haya, hey, you a haya. 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 Way haya, hey, yo, yo, way haya. Hey yo, way haya, hey yo, yo, way haya, hey yo. That's the hard part. You way high, way high, high, yo, way. You way high, way high, high, yo, way. Let's try that again. You way haya, hey, you way haya. same line, you know, it's good to do a little meditation to get our brains together, you know, during the heck part of the day you can forget things and what we do is we do a single pointed meditation where you meditate on one thing, like a leaf, a waterfall, something, you know, just focus on one thing for a while and then all the other crazy thoughts go away. And one of the most popular is the flute, so you just listen to somebody else playing the flute or yourself. and. Uh, Close your eyes and just listen to that and don't think about anything else. And I'll know if you are. I'm going to say, you in the back row, stop thinking about that. <laughs> so just close your eyes and meditate on the sound of the flute and nothing else.
too short. But you see the effect, right? Just a little, a little cover, maybe. So um, I'm going to go right ahead into really seriously decolonizing Westchester County. And the way I'm going to do this is go through all of the place names that were completely and utterly destroyed by the colonists in the colonial process. And, uh, you know, some of them, some of these names were somehow saved in some of the place names, usually screwed up, but then others were buried very deep, and I've been spending the last, how many, 10 years or so trying to find them and collect them. And so today, I believe this is the first time of presenting all of the river names in Westchester, um, the, the native ones that we know. And um, now, one thing is that Mara thinks that she may know the name of the little creek to the southwest, and you know, but I don't know that one. Yeah. But um, I'm going to go over here and uh, play with this mouse. So, ancient Westchester unveil. Um, you know, Westchester is mainly the home of the Wappingers, and there's a Wappingers Commonwealth, if not a Confederacy, and. So there is a kind of a governmental structure, but it's different than what people expect. It's very cooperative and somewhat flexible. So I call it a com commonwealth. But um, let me just get into this and you'll see what I'm up to. I wanted to show you a, a SUNY-oriented view, first of all, because I know that you all know SUNY Purchase Campus. So I'm gonna focus on that. First of all, this is Henry Hudson's journey September 14th, he came up through the Hudson Valley and passed all of these wonderful Wappingers nations in the Confederacy and didn't stop. So, um, didn't learn much about it, but there was quite a bit of diversity. And uh, there's a kit way Quisquis, Kichuan, Sitsink, Nakpim, and Matawan. That's just on the east bank. And the river was called the Mohitanihuk, which is the uh, Mo is the greatest of all, it's a superlative. Hikan means arm of the sea, which an estuary is, and Ituk means it flows both ways. So, you know, two, two aspects of the estuary. So, first of all, what does Wappingers mean? You know, that's the name we use uh, today for the people and for certain towns and whatnot. Refer to the native people here as Wappingers, but there's a lot more to it. So, a confederacy or a commonwealth was many, one of many Algonquin confederacies across North America. So it starts out with Wabeno, means men of the east. And uh, I don't know why they chose one gender, but that's what they did. So men of the east. So they came from Connecticut and intermarried with the Muncie group that was here. And they were, uh, you call the Muncie, Lenape, or Delaware if you like. But they are a distinct group, a very large group. So Wapano was a variation on that. And then Muwapinkus is a possum, meaning he has no fur on his tail. So all of the plant names and all of the animal names in Muncie and in, in uh, Wappingers break down syllable by syllable into sentences that tell you about the animal. So Muwapinkus means he has no fur on his tail, which is a possum. Or Wapinkus for short. Wapping this sounds like how you should pronounce Wappingers. And then the Dutch were always making what I call double Dutch puns, and so they called them Wappen Draggers or Weapon Draggers, which is kind of derogatory in a way. Can so, I just say? Yeah? Because I'm Dutch. Yeah. And uh, it's not really dragger. Draper is carrier. Okay. So, so they're oh. weapon carriers. It's not Okay. Derogatory as you maybe think. I've never heard that, thank you. Uh -huh. never heard of that. Mm -hmm. So carrier, weapon carrier. So still, still a little yes. you know, fearsome. Yes. Well thank you. That I'll remember that. I'll change mm -hmm. change my book. Mm -hmm. But um, so why did they chose possum? Because they were careful, because of the you know, large families or tenacity, or that they're very helpful, but no actually None of these. The, it was self-derogatory because the possum was not admired uh, because it sometimes got into graves and dug around. So I wanted to show you this 
map I made. This is in the green area is the SUNY campus of purchase. And I wanted to show you how, <coughs> how we're surrounded by these rivers or creeks that have native names or used to have. Many of them forgotten. So Blind Brook comes right through campus and it was Makwans, Makwams with M, Makwams with two M's. And uh, so that's something we'll be getting into later. But, and Byram Brook was called Armok. I know that's confusing. But that's on the other side, it has two branches. So one of the things I want to talk about later, if we get to it, is these marked in red are roads that are reasonably portages. And a portage, there's two kinds, but the portage is a road that helps you connect other streams together. So the Anderson uh, Hill Road really seems to be a minor connecting road between this unnamed creek, which it does Hill Road is another kind of a kind of a kind of a portrait. It's a shoreside road and it follows the river. So roads are uh, developed out of the need for portages, need for portages. So here you see some of the, uh, like how some of these rivers are right around us, right even here, and how they uh, could have, you know, used roads to travel between them and they would actually carry their canoes from one to the other. And uh, Hutchinson River is just to the south. So I wanted to show you another view because now that you've seen where SUNY is, and if you're oriented, you see, you recognize SUNY over here, Makwam's running through it, Byram to the right, but then further west is this Mamaronek stream or river, and this name in this area, below Riley, what's now Riley, is called Kakheteswake, and uh, nobody's published a uh, name, it's not well known, but that's the name for Memorona up in this area, but it means um, it's a flat area that's central. And so it's, uh, I think this is, Paketaswaki would be, a, you know, kind of a beautiful flat area that's in the middle of everything, uh, beautiful land. And then you have Silver Lake over here. Now this is the Bronx River over here, Aquahong which means steep banks. And so all these, uh, you know, the names are all translatable. Mamaronek is actually a native name, which means it's uh, the gathering of fresh water with salty. And that really refers to the part of the Mamaronek which falls in a small waterfall into this uh, harbor or bay. That's the sound. So we're surrounded. See, here we are, we're on the right. And then we have all these, one, two, maybe three, four, five, six of these streams very close to this campus. And all of them were used as portages. And I'll show you more about this later, but they all flow more or less in different directions and uh, different destinations. So if you were able to connect them by um, carrying your canoe, you could go several different places instead of just one. So it expands your route and your area of travel quite a bit. So here, I'm going to expand it again, and here is, uh, the, this is south, this whole area of this map is south of a campus. Uh, here's the Bronx River, Aquaham continuing, and this part here is, is the lower part of the SUNY campus. And this is that Byram, also to the east, and here's Blind Brook, a branch of it. Makwams, that's the main river going through the campus, but this is the southern part below it. And this is Aquanunk, the Hutchinson River, goes up this way. Then again, that's um, a good portage river. Aquanunk is uh, like a shallow area where the, you have a mouth of the river going into a shallow area. So the Hutchinson, it's interesting, I'll, just, I'll go over this again later. Um, but the Bronx River goes down to the Snackopins Wampum Factory, and the Hutchinson goes to the Lapawakin uh, Wampum Factory, and um, so when people are using these portage routes, often they are doing wampum trade and going back and forth to these factories. So I want to touch on that later. So we're in the middle of it. We are in an active area for these portages.
So this is further west, and uh, imagine that SUNY campus is over here, here to the right. And this is uh, the Bronx River curve, which shows up here, Aquahung. Now look at this, Hamilton and Main Street, Hamilton Avenue, Main Street. This is downtown White Plains. And what we see here, and I didn't mark it on this map with the rivers, but you can see these two yellow roads are uh, amazing portages, some of the best anywhere, because this is a major trade route of waterway. And over here you have the Mimarinek, also a major trade route. And there's only two miles in between. And so Main Street and Hamilton, one or the other, follows that logical route, and it's pretty flat. So it's a portage. And uh, so I'm going to, again, go back to that. Now, 22 is on here. Uh, 22 here, up in the upper left, cutting across. That is the Tulpe Hokan Trail, which is one of the largest ones, going from Montreal to Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, now number 22. And Tulpe Hokan means the, it's like the land of the turtle. And so it's like turtle, the back of the turtle is North America. So it's very significant, it goes right by here. So uh, this is sideways, that's a, a turtle carving that's found in the um, Bronx Arboretum. And the blue arrow points to it, you see that black dot? And it's interesting, and again this is a little bit speculative, but you can uh, see some of the writing here. But there was an old uh, Commonwealth Confederacy in the West called the Tapan, and it only goes to the Bronx River and then basically stops. So, and on the east side is the Siwanwai Confederacy, very large. On the west side is this very large uh, Tapan, and uh, Tapan means uh, cold water uh, stream, but uh, had its center at Tapan, New York. Do you see how this, this line goes along the Bronx River dividing the east and west? And also what it is, is there's, again, Route 22 is on a ridge of the watershed that divides the two watersheds of the Hudson and the um, either the East River or the Sound. And it's said that you know, the people were so oriented towards water that you know, it's like if a raindrop fell on the common path, we call 22, it would either roll to the west become part of the Hudson River or roll to the east, become part of the Sound. And so people identified themselves as to which side they lived on and where their water went. And so it's a very significant line. But there at the turtle, it turns uh, to the east and bends around and cuts through uh, Long Island. And this is based on linguistics. as There are linguistic uh, studies and they show that this whole Mini Sink, Tapan, you know, Mini Sink, Muncie, or Tapan, same thing. Uh, language territory really goes to this uh, red line, the theoretical line, Muncie line. This is about 1000 AD. On the other side is this whole Quiripi language, which is, uh, you're going to see some examples. This is like the Siwanoi type. So uh, I just showed you that, and the turtle marks that turning point. Okay, so this is a lot to take in, but this is um, a compilation of all these uh, native names of the rivers that you know. So I'm going to go through these. Um, you have saw a couple of them on your way on the map, but um, the Croton River, what's called the Kituan, or Great Tributary. And uh, Croton, where Croton comes from, Kenoten, wind in his hair, or Cloten, he contends. But then the Dutch named it after... Uh, the town in Italy, and um, so that I think it's a mnemonic device to remember. The Mianus River is named after a chief of the Siwanoi, he who gathers the people. Cross River was Petenege, and there's a village by that name. I'm going to show you a map that I just made, um, the meaning to do it, at Cross Pond, and the word Petenege means diverted aside or a false start, so the way the, wor the water flows awkwardly. Titicus River is from Muticus, shaking grass. Kensico from Ki Chief Kokenseko, or a Siwanoi chief, and it means many small owls, some people think. That's been published, but we don't know. Crom Pound is from Kikadis, a meadow or small marsh. It's been, as you see, it's been changed a bit. 
Bud's neck was uh, originally Apawamis, which is birch bark, that's a nickname. Byram River was Arma, which seems to be from Waramog, or a good fishing place. The word Arma has, shows up many places. There are many places which have been called Armonk or are still called Armonk. And the reason is the people uh, moved quite a bit. And a lot of that along, uh, I think, Route 202, they, which was a trail then, and they followed it, leaving their name everywhere. Blind Brook, Mahwams, as I mentioned, blind cover or dark water. Pocantico is very interesting. The word Kintikoi, you may have heard from colonial records as a, uh, a kind of a dance, almost like a swear dance in the European version of it. Po Cantico, a po is a waterfall, and it means dancing waterfall, regardless of whatever you may read. It's very plain in, in Algonquin. And, and if you go into the hollow there at Po Cantico, you can see how if tide came in, it would make it dance in a hollow, which was then called Sleepy Hollow later on. Okay, so the Wampus River, Wampus, is a tributary coming from a small pond. And there's a lot of stories about a, a Wampus creature, but, you know, I, I want to save all these, these stories, these uh, mythological stories for another talk. So, uh, Sprain Brook was called El Paramat, which is a kind of fish, probably a cod. The sawmill was famously Nepperhan, they're still in Nepperhan. Uh, Avenue, and some people think it's British, but it, it sure ain't British. It's a tributary with a fish trap place. And Mimarinek, as I mentioned, where the water falls in the salty, but in the land it's called Pahetiswake, beautiful central land. The Bronx River, Aquahung, means steep banks. Now, the, some, this is, maybe you want to comment on this, there's this strange uh, name, Suerut. And um, it's in the colonial records for the Bronx River. I don't know a good translation. Nobody's really tried, but it could be a root or rocks of the Siwanoi. Uh, it doesn't really add up, I guess. Hutchison River, Aquanunk, high banks near the mouth. And Peekskill Hollow Brook was called Paquintuck, and shallow water falling to Salty. So just a few more. Kisco. It was really Sisqua with a C, and somebody thought the C should be pronounced as a K, and that's why we have Kisco. Shallow, muddy river. So Sakasin is a large rock. Sunnyside is the Zigtik Sprout Brook, we don't know. Canopus, Quanimpius is a long body of drinking water. And again, the Dutch coming up with ways to remember it, um, there's a constellation over Egypt that you can see from Egypt called Canopus, which their travelers had discovered. So that was another device to remember. So Tibbetts Brook was called Mushul Moshul Brook. And you know, there's a Moshul Parkway, it's all the same thing. It means a field burned to make a clearing. And uh, Takaho River, Takaho is a root that's good to eat. The Indian turnip, or a jack in the pulpit. And Sprain River, our men peril from a Native American name, our monks perahin, a uh, good place to fish for a parahen, but I don't know what fish that is. I don't know if anybody knows, it's maybe a lot. And uh, let's go to Wickers Creek, that's one up in Donna Square you may have heard of. The original <coughs> was the tricky Wekweski, which is shallow water at a prominent place. And the name of the Village was Wisquakwa, that's a different word. And that had the double meaning. It means the, uh, you know, well, it's at, in the west at the shallow water. But there's other uh, possible meanings. Stony Brook, Pokiotesson, the Beaver Swamp Brook. So those are basically all the major rivers. And so we've now decolonized Westchester. So I would suggest once we finish with naming with subtitles everything in the school, then we go on and we put subtitles on all the river signs everywhere with these names, and that will be, I think, really uh, progressive and educational. So this is something that's, I suppose this is probably 10 miles away to the northwest, but it's something I find fascinating. 
This little town of Lewisboro that you see that's shaded in is actually home, was home to four different major tribes who were all affiliated with different confederacies, or sachemses, excuse me, and they're all part of the Wappingers Confederacy or Commonwealth. So this is very unusual, because it's not that big a place. So uh, this original underlying map is from Bolton's book called New York City and Indian Possession. And uh, so it's interesting, Cross Pond, which is now called Lake Kichewan, is near the border of these low, lower tribes, like right there, can you see my, yeah, that's, that's the Cross Pond. There is a standing stone at the south end, which is a council rock. The leaders of each tribe could reach the rock without crossing each other's tribal land. I think that's pretty clever. And there was a local village near the beach on the other side where they could have hosted guests. Oh, by the way, Chappaqua did not belong to any Sachemdom, hence this name, which means a separate place. And that's Chappaqua, a large, like yellow, I mean, that's just an arbitrary color, but this whole area was not affiliated with other uh, of the Sachemdoms, but it was part of the Wappingers Confederacy. So, uh, Again, the Kichuank, this whole large area around Croton, and the Harahamis here is a subtribe, an important subtribe of them. The Saugatuck uh, over on the east side, and the Kandatoa was a subtribe of them. And you see Kandatoa here, and it goes right into Lewisboro here, and they go right, up, right around the pond. And then um, the Siwanoi were represented via the Toquam. The Toquam is a very interesting. Uh, Wappingers tribe that right you know below, and they were with the uh, Siwanoi and the Tenkagis uh, are here, and that's we have the lower right corner of this territory, territory, uh, part of the Wappinger Commonwealth, and the Tenkagis were tied to these Wequiski I mentioned, um, so the Dutch referred to all this as a Canton um, because of the Switzerland at that time was very successful with the Canton. So it's not necessarily Confederacy. Although Daniel Ninnam, the most famous chief of the Wappingers, did use that word. But they got along peacefully, remained close diplomatically, and had peace councils. Uh, so the four tribes of Lewisboro, plus uh, Sintsink over here on the river, um, constitute about half of the most powerful sachemdoms in the whole Wappingers Commonwealth, and here they are sharing this one place. So we'll get a little closer. Um, so these are some of the place names and their translations. Muscoot, so there's a little river there. Um, swampy, right, duck line. Mopus is muddy river. Wakabek is a pond in the mountains. Cross River, again, is the Pepenikek, the very side. Same thing with Cross Pond. Nanich Kestawak, where there are two prominent tributaries coming together, you see right in the middle. That means two prominent um, tributaries coming together. And that was part of where the massacre occurred. We can talk about that later. Uh, famous massacre in 1644. The Byram River, or Monk River, good fishing. That's over here. Wampus Creek, I mentioned. Uh, Kohansing is pines and tributary and a small place. So it's uh, a it's hard to say what's small, but it's probably a sm pines of a small tributary. And that's Kohan, the sun here, uh, down below here, that's Kohansi. Roatan River is a creek that is almost dry at low tide. Pretty prominent river down here, Roatan, but its positioning is such that when the tide is low in the sound, then it goes dry. Toquam is a subtribe of the Siwanoi at Pound Ridge. And Siwanoi, of course, the Sachem, Kendatoa, Sachemdom, and Richfield, Harahamas, subtribe of the Kichuan. Now I'm going to go even further in and look at this. I just finished this. This is a map of Cross Pond as it was. It was obviously a place of great importance. People have done some archaeology there, just maybe fairly informal. But you see the X at the bottom is the location of the Council Rock, which may still be there. And here we have a small island, which is good for private meetings. And then we have Cross Pond, we have the Cross River, which is also called Pepenike. Now this whole river was 
clearly controlled by the Quichuan, because um, there are many references to that, that they would travel to this pond all along it, from the Hudson all the way down um, to here, which is pretty far inland. Um, so the Quichuan chiefs would come in through their corridor. Here's Cross Pond Road. And this whole area here was the Siwanoi territory of the Tukwam. So they had authority over the land that the Council Rock was on. And then the Tenkagis, who were part of the Wekwizgi, they had authority over the, maintaining the small island, where you need, in order to have any privacy for any important, pretty important meeting and decision making. And the Kanditoa, who were part of the Sagatuk, much later on, part of <coughs> other groups. But uh, the, you have a cooking area over there which has been excavated and uh, archaeologically, I'd say in an informal way, but there's a lot of cooking bones over here. And this is the lake path, which was the main native path that is still maintained and I wouldn't call it paved, but it's, you know, you can drive on it. This whole area is that Sagatuck area. And there seems to have possibly been a guest area over here that's based on patterns of settlement. There's definitely a village over here, and there's a beach. So the guest area is my uh, assumption that there would have to have been a guest area here because this is where they're cooking lots of food, and here's where they <coughs> have the local village. So look at how this was set up as the Siwanoi had an important part they, they had a jurisdiction of the, the rock itself. Tentagis had jurisdiction of the island, and the Sagatuck had jurisdiction of the village. And then the Kichuan, who were very powerful, had you know, jurisdiction over the river. So they'd all come together without crossing each other's paths, and I think that's really remarkable. And again, this is some of this is reconstruction, but uh, based on some good, I think, those who have gone on before. So that's a new map. So I'm not going to read all of this, but I wanted you to get more information about these various political groups. Because again, if we're going to decolonize Westchester, we need to know what was replaced by our own people and governments here. So the Commonwealth of the Wappingers, um, well, Amorga Rikakan was the Grand Sachin until 1664 and then replaced by Sisikimus and again, Wapping Men of the East. And uh, they were big on receiving Im immigrants. They came in the 1300, was really they became solidified as the Wappingers and became, you know, the, the Possum people, um, Wappingus. And okay, and I'll, I'll correct that, Wapping Dragons. Okay, so um, they were reduced in number by smallpox in 1636 and 56, and then in 92. And then a form of malaria in 1700, which is not a form that we're familiar with apparently today, uh, and identified a plague similar to malaria in 1684. Uh, and then King's William Wars at the end of the 1600s, many Wappingers were recruited illegally into service. It's said that two thirds perished during that time. So that's it's from a reliable historical source. Um, a lot you'll hear some people tell you that all the land was stolen by all the white people. And you should be careful when somebody starts out a sentence that way, because I've seen you know, many of these treaties and deeds, and it's not a question of necessarily that it was stolen. There are some lands that probably were stolen. Uh, interestingly enough, the land around Gracie Mansion was uh, a patent that was given as a gift to Mr. Classen for helping, I believe it was for helping Keith, Governor Keith, to run a massacre on, over in New Jersey, it was in New Jersey City, 